Bruce McDougall talks to Clover more about issues in this weekend's Sydney Council elections, including plans to boost live music in the capital. Of the 129 local councils in New South Wales, the councillors in 79 are up for re-election, with a number also handing it to their residents to elect a mayor. Results are expected to come in from mid-evening, with tight contests expected in many areas including the City of Sydney where independent Lord Mayor Clover Moore is seeking an unprecedented fourth term. Sister of former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, Christine Forster, is hoping to hand the Lord Mayoralty to the Liberals. A change to voting rules in the CBD local authority, which sees businesses get two votes to one each for residents, has been massively controversial and could pose a threat to Ms Moore. The first council elections in New South Wales since Mike Baird took over as a Premier in 2014. The poll could also prove to be an unofficial referendum on his leadership. While initially popular, the Premier has ruffled feathers with his support of the controversial Sydney pub and lockout laws, and his ban on greyhound racing. However, according to Dr Bly Grant, a senior lecturer at UTS Institute for Public Policy and Governance it's the coalition's forced council amalgamations which the government labelled fit for the future could bite it on the electoral bum. The fit for the future reform process has been one of the most contentious and expensive structural reforms probably in Australia's history. So I would expect some significant local government ramifications, he told News. Com. Oh, up to 2 million people living in 49 local government areas including Newcastle. Wollongong and much of inner Sydney have been denied a vote because their councils have either been merged or have been earmarked for amalgamation. These councils will be run by administrators, dubbed Mr. Bed's unelected dictators by opposition leader Luke Foley, until elections in September 2017. It's caused a ruction. It's made the whole notion of local government, some would say. Very controversial but other people would say very toxic, said Dr Grant. He predicted that it could lead to some voters rejecting the coalition. Despite the changes a huge range of councils did go to the polls on Saturday from Blacktown, once the largest authority in New South Wales with 300 OO residents, to tiny Brewarrina Shire which services just 1,700 locals. One of the most closely watched fights will be the City of Sydney where rivals are looking to kick Lord Mayor Clover Moore out of the town hall throne she's occupied for 12 years. Critics say Ms Moore has focused too much on the villages that surround Sydney CBD at the expense of the needs of the big end of town. However, she points to a rise in the city's population by 30% since she came to power in a Brimming Council financial surplus Canberra can only dream of. A contentious voting reform means that business in the city get two votes to the residents' one. It's a situation that only exists in the city of Sydney and many have interpreted it as a blatant attempt to dislodge Ms Moore. But supporters of the changes say businesses are critical to the success of the city of Sydney and deserve a bigger say. The Liberals' Christine Forster is the candidate most likely to profit from any loss by Ms Moore. Although, perhaps in a sign the Liberals are not as confident as they are letting on. Media have been banned from their after-party. Labor's Linda Scott and another independent Angela Vathulkas are also eyeing up the big chair. My word for tonight is clovered definition when a gerrymander backfires. Hashtag Team Clover Hashtag New South Waipo. Ms Moore will prove hard to dislodge though. Winning 51% of the vote, more than three times her nearest rival in the 2012 election. My feeling is I don't think the increased business vote is going to be a game-breaker for Clover but it's going to be very tight, said Dr Grant.
Some are predicting that Ms. Moore could hang on to the Lord Mayor position but lose councillors on her independent ticket forcing more bipartisanship in Sydney Town Hall. Famous names including footy legend Ian Robertson the former head of the Australian Medical Association and frequent media commentator on health issues. Karen Phelps is standing in Sydney. A famous face who isn't up for election is property developer and former Auburn Deputy Mayor Salem Mayhaya. The entire council was sacked by the government and an inquiry is currently underway into decisions made by councillors, as if to ensure Auburn could never return. The government then split the authority in tow and divided it up to its neighbouring councils. Other councils to watch include Liverpool where a bitter battle has seen a number of likely candidates fall by the wayside including former mayor and one-time rising Liberal star Ned Manon, who was one of Australia's youngest mayors. Plans for an ice smoking room in the area have become a hot topic. Meanwhile in Blacktown, in Sydney's west, an infamous face is hoping for election success with the Liberals Jamie's Diaz standing. You may remember the face because he's the chap who stood in the 2013 federal election and when asked by a reporter what the coalition's six-point plan was to limit asylum seekers, he got stumped after one. Mr Diaz's father is already on the council and Blacktown's Labour Mayor Stephen Barley has accused the Liberal patriarch of attempting to create a Diaz town. But Dr. Grant said in the end, local elections are often won or lost on local issues. So the machinations on Macquarie Street may have less of an effect than thought. Benedict.brook at news.com.a